get started now. Hi, my name is Lindsay Sprawl, and this is my book, We Were Promised Spotlights. It's a young adult book for ages 14 and up, and it came out from Putnam Penguin on March 24th during all of the craziness. Um, so I'm just going to read the very beginning of it, which is very short and sweet. Um, it takes place in uh, the fictional town of Papawonk, Massachusetts in 1999. And this is the very first chapter, which was originally published as a short story. I went into the bathroom outside the gymnasium, which was all decorated like an evening in Paris, because I knew I was going to throw up. It was the secret bathroom, the single stall one tucked behind the staircase, where you went if you didn't want to be seen or heard. When I got inside, Corvus McClellan was there, smoking a cigarette. I hated Corvus McClellan. I mean, I was supposed to hate her. I, only I was starting to miss her now that it was senior year and everyone was getting ready for graduation. She used to be one of us. Every day at recess, it was the secret bathroom. we played Foursquare, Susan Blackford, Heather Flynn, Corvus, and me, but that ended in seventh grade. Corvus gave me a pitying look. That homecoming crown looks stupid on you, she said. I gripped the side of the sink, trying not to do this in front of her. Corvus McClellan wasn't a person I wanted to throw up in front of. The crown was floppy and made of the same cardboard as the Burger King ones, only it was spray-painted gold and had a tiny Eiffel Tower on the side, which was pushing my ear down. She was right. I looked like a dildo. What are you even doing here? I asked her. Corvus should have been insecure, but she wasn't. She had jaundice-looking skin, lips that were too small, and hair that was always greasy. My date, Brad O'Halloran, was just voted homecoming king. I let him go down on me a month before in the back of his Datsun, and a few days later, my vagina felt like it was full of fire ants. I ran into Corvus in the waiting room of the gynecologist's office next to the plasma, plasma donation center in the strip mall by the highway. I was sitting there with a pamphlet in my lap that said, genital herpes in you. She looked up from her book and gave me a tight smile. Nice going, she said, and I wanted to murder her. Are you going to bark, she asked me now. My crown was slipping off. She put her hand on my back and moved it in slow circles. We hadn't touched since seventh grade, just after she passed me the note I used to destroy her. I could have held it down before that, but her touch made me feel green. There it was, my dinner, regurgitated in hot chunks in the sink. When I was done, we sat down on the cool tile of the floor. Why are you being nice to me, I asked her, wiping sweat off my forehead with the back of my hand. She shrugged. I don't know, she said. You look like shit. The real problem with Corvus was that she knew. She knew I dated Brad because the other girls wanted him, and I wanted the other girls. I wanted my best friend Susan to hug me for a really, really, really long time while I buried my face in her stomach and Melissa Etheridge played in the background. I wanted her to drive me to California, and then I wanted to dye in her hair. Want a cigarette, Corvus asked. I want a scar, I said. A big, terrible-looking one that would make people afraid of me but not feel sorry for me. So far, no matter what was going on in the world, no matter which unpronounceable countries were at war, Corvus had always been there, wearing her backpack covered in patches, but not for much longer. Corvus got good grades, and even though she wasn't pretty, she had that rare glow of a special person, or at least a person who believes she's special. She looked like someone who just set her house on fire. She looked like someone who was going to ride away on a horse and never come back. I imagined her leaving, spending nights in a long chain of different states in, a stale mo in stale motel rooms where headlight beams crawled across the walls and she would have girlfriends and she would not be ashamed. After she left, I would be stuck with all the assholes who loved pretending that the gymnasium really was Paris, who thought that I was lucky for being pretty. Maybe I would start to believe them after a while. I looked like a homecoming queen. Probably someday I would be a dental hygienist. You'll be okay, she said. I didn't believe her. There was such a private peace in her eyes. 
I couldn't know how she got to where she was now. I could only see that she was there. Thank you.